Um, if Chris Benoit can do the crap he did and the fans still love him, you know, they're very forgiving. You know, I've, I've made some major mistakes in my personal life and yep. they're very, very forgiving, but they forgive you. But no one does it let us talk about Hulk Hogan's comment on impulsive where he discusses the nature of how pro wrestling fans are so forgiving. And he was being pretty ridiculous by comparing his racism to Chris Benoit's baby murder. And that led to a lot of people losing their minds online and being very mad at him, rightfully so, because nobody has forgiven Chris Benoit. There is a fringe audience that still thinks he should be in the Hall of Fame. There is a fringe audience who still thinks that you know chris benoit is innocent there's a fringe audience that has gotten over the whole child murder thing but no most people have not gotten over it hulk hogan you could just forget it but i will say this there are some other despicable people who have done despicable things and hulk hogan's main point that pro wrestling fans are very forgiving it kind of stands up Let's go through some of them. Recently, there was a video of Satoru Sayama, Tiger Mask, floating around on the internet that showed him in his Shuto gym, which is after his wrestling career, and him actually kicking the shit out of some of his students. I mean, he's beating them with sticks and all kinds of stuff. This, of course, is typical of Japanese pro wrestling, where you had Chigusa Nagayo um, in the Gaia Girls documentary just absolutely brutalizing some smaller young lady. Um, Antonio Inoki was also very famous for his very brutal training uh, style. He was hitting people with sticks and all kinds of stuff, too. And this physical abuse that all of these beloved Japanese wrestlers put younger wrestlers through, and they're still beloved. Nobody mentioned any of that crap, you know, when Inoki passed away that he was abusive and used to beat the shit out of talent. Nobody used that against Tiger Mask today. Nobody ever mentions how he beat the hell out of a lot of his students. Nobody cares. People are got they still watch Antonio Inoki matches and don't have a problem with it. They still love Tiger Mask. They don't have a problem with the fact that he was abusive and being a jerk. They didn't care. But if it was Bill DeMott, they want to run out of the business. You know, so that hypocrisy is there. And Bill DeMott didn't even do half the stuff that you see Antonio Inoki or uh, Chigusa Nagayo or uh, Satoru Sayama due to students. I mean, not even half. And, and let alone did it on camera. So, I mean, that's just, so that's just one thing. So you could be abusive to your students and wrestling fans will overlook it and not care. Second is domestic violence. Because Stone Cold Steve Austin was arrested for domestic violence, right? Nobody talks about that anymore. They don't even mention it. It doesn't come up in any conversation. Nobody's trying to get him canceled. You just had a couple of wrestlers fired for domestic violence. Um, and Stone Cold Steve Austin, they're still buying the t-shirts. So I guess if you beat your wife, wrestling fans will eventually get over it. Now, if you have, quote unquote, bad politics, like, you know, Val Venus or Kane, well, they'll never get over that. You know, they hate you to the end of the life. But if you beat your wife, well, they can overlook that. It's not that big a deal, right? So, what Hulk Hogan is saying has some level of truth to it. Um, Jimmy Snuka, he was accused of murder in like 19, in the 1980s. He was still getting huge pops in 1990s. He was still getting huge pops in 2005. You have Kevin Owens using the word nigger on camera. I think the Young Bucks did it too. And most people are completely and totally men in black you didn't see it it didn't happen so how is it that kevin owens can call somebody a nigger and it's bad if hulk hogan does it i mean they'll try to twist their brains into a knot to try to explain that but the facts are the facts he is on video using that word and uh he hasn't been canceled for it. So it seems like wrestling fans are only very forgiving if they like your matches. If they like your matches, then, well, they'll forgive you. If they don't like your matches, then nothing you say and nothing you can do is going to change things. 
Or if you have, quote unquote, bad politics, then they won't forgive you at all. If Hulk Hogan was a good little liberal, they probably would just turn around and say, oh, that Hulkster, that's just Hulkster doing Hulkster stuff. But since he's a Trump supporter, all of a sudden he's the super devil and the worst racist of all time. There's plenty of stories of various wrestlers like Edge and Randy Orton and Sean Waltman uh, bullying female talent. Um, there was stories of Randy Orton shitting in women's bags, uh, Edge and Randy Orton bullying women on airplanes, all sort of stuff. Nobody talks about that stuff anymore. Nobody cares about that. You know, um... They, there's no questions about it. Nobody dares ask a question about it because people kind of like Randy Orton. Now, there is, of course, a certain level of uh, pissy wrestling fan that doesn't like Randy Orton's matches, and therefore they bring it up in articles like Voices of Wrestling recently did. But the, tr the truth is that's what he was accused of doing. You know, um, you compare that to Brock Lesnar, for instance, who was accused of only tangentially being involved with this Vince McMahon thing, and he's been excommunicated from the entire business. It's like, uh, we don't we don't even know what level of involvement he had in this situation, and all of a sudden his entire, his career is over? That's weird. You know, but there are other people who we know have been more involved in things, and they're still around. You know, Don Callis, for instance, who you know, there was this whole investigation around his time in Impact when he was a executive and supposedly had sexually harassed Scarlett, the, the wife of Karrion Cross. He's still working in AEW and nobody said a damn thing. So in order to keep it short, I will say this. Wrestling fans have been incredibly forgiving, especially when a talent is incredibly talented and somebody they, they, they like. Jeff Hardy has gotten more opportunities and screwed up more in 20 years than any wrestler outside of a murderer or a rapist. I mean, Jeff Hardy has screwed it up as much as he possibly could. He tried very hard to get people to hate him. And a lot of people still don't hate Jeff Hardy. They still don't have any problems with them. They feel bad for him more than anything because they still want to see Jeff Hardy wrestle. They still want to see Jeff Hardy persevere. And they don't have a problem with Jeff Hardy. You know, but there have been guys who have don't have 10 DUIs who have been pretty much run out of the industry because he has, quote unquote, bad politics or I just don't like him. Like um, Austin Aries, for instance, he has a bad personality. I just don't like him. So he's going to get rid of him. But all the guys and all the DUIs, they get to continue working and we root for them. So Hulk Hogan is not entirely wrong. He's wrong in respect of people still love Chris Benoit, that's absolutely, that's, that's bird brain commentary right there. But when you compare that there are still fans who are losing their minds about Logan Paul and him filming some dead bodies in Japan, you know, years ago, I mean, this is years and years ago at this point, and people are still holding that over his head. It's like, dude, get over it. You know, um, fans get over things. It, that's just Hulk Hogan's overall point, his larger point. He's wrong on the details, but he's right on the larger point that fans do get over things. And you got to work your way through it. And this is not just a wrestling thing. It's a music thing. You know, Chris, Chris Brown's career didn't end when he beat up Rihanna. People thought it was going to, but it didn't. He recently had a conversation about Jerry the King Lawler being accused of having sex with underage girls in 1992. Um, it comes up every once in a while, but for the most part, people have completely and totally forgot that that even happened. So it, it happens that people are accused of terrible things. Sometimes it's even proven that they did it and people get over it. So Hulk Hogan is not wrong in the macro. He's only wrong in the micro in terms of he thinks that people are going to get over it and love him like they love Chris Benoit. And that's not true because everybody hates Chris Benoit. Nobody likes Chris Benoit. And while some people are fragile fans where, you know, minor things that disappoint them 
will lead them to not being fans anymore. Much like, you know, John Cena cuck into China has turned off a lot of people on John Cena. That's not really all that big of a deal, but you know, it just is a chink in his armor and people are upset about that. It's not like John Cena beat up somebody or anything like that, you know, compared to the, to the sins of every, everybody else here. It's not that big a deal. Undertaker wearing a uh, Blue Lives Matter hoodie, you know, sent people into a tizzy. It's like in comparison to some of the horrors that we've seen other wrestlers put people's lives through. I mean, this is minimal. It's actually minimal. It's amazing that <clears throat> in, in the Undertaker uh, commentary, for the way, is uh, he was supposedly... Uh, a homophobe for hitting Canyon in the head very hard with a steel chair. People completely forgot that Canyon pretty much assaulted James Mitchell and was trying to kill him. Like, it's amazing what kind of things that we overlook when we feel sorry for somebody. Oh, oh my goodness. I like him. So it's okay that he almost strangled his friend to death. So it seems that a lot of fans do expect wrestlers to be angels and for you to never say or do anything to have perfect control over your life at all times when that's just not reality. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm just here to say that I've seen what Hulk Hogan has said. I've seen what Hulk Hogan believes to be true. I'm just saying he's wrong about the details. He should not put himself on the same level as Chris Benoit. That's kind of ridiculous. Um, I don't even hold over Hulk Hogan's head that he said that, you know, but that Chris Benoit thing is absolutely unforgivable. So those kinds of things are very different. And all of the things that I've talked about here have been different. And, you know, there have been plenty of accusations versus facts and people who have been arrested and people who weren't arrested and things that were said in character versus things that were not said in character and all this kind of stuff that's been floating around the internet and reasons why people have gotten canceled. Everybody choosing to Hulk, hold on to Hulk Hogan's sins with the Kung Fu grip, never overlooking it, never putting it down, having to fuck at the Hulk Hogan and all this kind of stuff they got going on, man. It's like, relax, you know, we, we get it. You can virtue signal on your own time. What Hulk Hogan did was bad. What he said was bad. He's not running away from that. But ultimately, I'm pretty sure there's somebody out there doing something worse. Like, share, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. No one does it better.